You know, there's a new term going around in the real estate industry, house hacking. This is an investment strategy where you buy a home using a low down payment residential mortgage and then rent out part of the home to generate income. Supposedly, some people use house hacking as a long-term investment strategy to both make enough money to pay off the property's mortgage and also to cover the cost of the mortgage while they're living there. Well, I am here to tell you today that house hacking is not new. This is how immigrants, Jamaicans like myself, other Caribbean people, but I would venture to say most immigrants, this is how we have always bought our property. It's not new to us. Hello everyone, Marcia Melendez here, Brooklyn Homes and Lifestyle, your friendly Brooklyn realtor, coming to you from Brooklyn. And I am going to give you today the lowdown on how Jamaicans do house hacking. I emigrated to the US and Brooklyn in 68, 1968 from England. I had lived there since I was a toddler with most of my mother's family and some of my dad's. In England, we all lived together in one house until my mother and each of her sisters helped one another to purchase and move into their own house. My mother, ever the pioneer and a Renaissance woman in her own, came here by herself in the early 60s and after securing her legal status, she helped her sisters, other family members, and buco friends to emigrate to the States. The house hacking process was completed once again. My mother owned a four family house in East Flatbush and all her sisters and family lived in that house. We lived in two apartments and she rented out two. Once everybody saved up enough money to buy their own property, they moved out, brought their own house, and the house hacking process was completed. It's nothing new for us. It was called looking out for your family. It was called building generational wealth. We never thought it would be called house hacking. So today, as I show you how the house hacking process works, you ready for this? Yes, man, let's go. Step number one, you have to save up enough money to buy your first property. This means you have to save up for a down payment. With loans for first time home buyers as low as three and a half percent, you're looking at approximately 20,000 to pay down on a basic 600,000 starter house in Brooklyn. You will also need closing costs of approximately three to four percent. That's another 25,000. Let's say you need approximately 50,000 altogether to buy your first house. How are you gonna save up for that 50,000? The most obvious way is to get another job. Okay, we all know the jokes about Jamaicans having six and seven jobs. But seriously, most of us can work more than one full-time job at a time, if only for a short while with the goal of accumulating money for a big goal. And what could be a bigger goal than buying your own home? So you get the part-time job, you work for a little while. Another way you can save money is to live with relatives for a short while. That's what my mother and her sisters did. They lived together, short while, yes, they had family disagreements, but they knew it was just for a short while. Once everybody moved into their own place, we were all lovey-dovey again. Another way is to get money gifts from your parents and family. My mom and dad contributed on more than one occasion a couple of dollars to help us acquire a property. It's not uncommon in a lot of cultures to make gifts of money for their children and young people who are going to buy property. So why can't we do the same thing? Just imagine if everyone in a family contributed just $500 to a young person who was buying their first home. Imagine how that could help boost their savings. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Like I was always borrowing money from my mother and father to buy property. That's the way it works. But the, get this, the best part of the Jamaican system of saving is that we save in a susu. Yes, this is how a lot of immigrant cu cultures save their money in a susu. Susus are so common now that even when you go for your mortgage and you tell the banker that you saved the money in a susu, you give them a letter and they allow it when they're qualifying you for a mortgage. So let me explain briefly to you how this susu works. A susu works basically like uh, a Christmas club, which is another forced way of saving money. Well, in a partner, which is what we call our susus in Jamaica, we call it partner, which I guess is slang for partner. Well, in, in Jamaica, when we save in a susu, a group of friends and family form a club, 
to save a set amount of money. Let's say $10,000. One member is entrusted with managing the money and that person is called the banker. The other members, the partners, they contribute a stipulated amount called a hand each week. In our example of 10,000, the contribution would be $500 over 20 weeks with 20 members. Every week, one member receives the total amount called the draw contributed by all the partners. So in our example, 500 times 20 people would add up to a full draw of $10,000 per hand. In most cases, the banker collects a hand or half a hand also as a service fee for managing the group. So that's how the SUSU or partner works. Other important thing to remember that this is your first house. It does not have to be and will not be perfect unless you have a whole bunch of money to spend, okay? So you buy what you can afford and then you put a bit of money in it and update it. If you buy a house and you put $20,000 worth of work in it, automatically your equity is going to increase by double that amount. This is called forced appreciation and we'll talk about it in another video. But don't look for perfection. Look for something that you, in a neighborhood that you like, that is um, within your budget and something that you can see yourself living in for a couple of years. Finally, enjoy living in your own home and start your real estate empire. There is nothing like living in your own house. Neighborhoods where the majority of residents are homeowners versus renters seem to offer better quality of life. Homeowners have a vested stake in maintaining their property and the neighborhoods, and the children reared in homes where their parents own rather than rent seem to do better in colleges and in, in, in school scores. And let's not forget the important things. You can decorate it any way you want to. You can have it be the center for your family's social life. Think lots of holiday parties and birthday parties if you're like our family anyway. And it's great having a home where your kids can hang out with their friends instead of you always wondering where they are and what they're up to. Owning a home means you don't have to worry about the rent going up. You'll get a tax break on your income tax every month. No more crying about how Uncle Sam is taking all of your money. And the best advantage to me is the flexibility of your lifestyle when you get older. Listen, once you have your home, manage it correctly. Don't be a slumlord. Fix it today or you're gonna lose money on it tomorrow. There's a lot more that goes into turning this first house into a real estate portfolio. And part number two of house hacking Jamaican style, I'm gonna go into that. How to take care of your property, how to get tenants, and how to make money. Owning property is one of the easiest ways for ordinary people like you and me to become financially comfortable if not rich. You've heard me say it before and it is so true. So stay tuned for house hacking number two, Jamaican style. Blessings.